Hey everyone, my name is Felix and this is Eastwood Fab. And what I have for you today is the Saturn 3D printer by Iligu. This is their latest printer after they debuted their Mars printer, which is a smaller printer, but this is the mid-size printer. And this printer itself will be available next month, um, which would be November of 2020. Uh, right now at the taping of this video, it is mid-October. And the reason why I have it is because I managed to pick it up during the second phase of the pre-order. And it arrived yesterday, so I'm looking forward to unboxing it with you and then going through some prints and showing you some of the results and giving you all the details that I can provide you as long as well as some tips and possibly some tricks to make your your printing experience the best it could be. Now, I'm going to be, like I said, unboxing this. If you've seen a lot of unboxing videos, feel free to fast forward. Um, but this is going to be my experience and I just wanted to share it along with you. Okay, so I got my, my trusty knife here. And like with some of the other videos that I've seen, um, packing is extravagant. I haven't seen a, a single video that's got bad, uh, bad packing. So when I first open it, this is what I see. The box itself is not in bad shape. Uh, when I received my Mars, it was in good shape as well. I still have the box, because um, you never know. So immediately when I open this, um, they give you some extra FEP. This is the manual. And there's the printer. Uh, on top here, it, I would imagine that this is the toolbox. And just like what I suspected, you're going to get an extra one of uh, these, which works out pretty good. I use them for cutting supports or any other miscellaneous hobbying. They're pretty good. After a while, you want a clean set so that... Uh, uh, you don't have any resin on it. You got your spatula, um, you got your beaker. They seem to, like, with all the other videos that I've watched, uh, it's interesting seeing how theirs are packed in comparison. So, everybody gets the beaker. I'm not quite sure what the beaker is for, uh, but my USB uh, is packed in with the gloves. So, and they give you plenty of gloves. And your much needed tools, and here's another uh, Allen screw head. Now, this is a metal spatula, which I don't recommend using. Uh, stick with the plastic. If you go to a hardware store, they even have ones that are thinner than this at the tip, so you can get everything off. This, this just has the potential of causing uh, gouges and scratches onto your build plate. And um, I've got a bunch of these. They're just not used. I use them for my FDM printers, though. So here's the power cord, and here is what's known as the brick. Huh, now this is something that uh, I have not seen in any of the videos. Um, this appears to be a 10% off, 10% off card right there. Uh, so that's that's something new. That's pretty awesome. Um, these are filters. Uh, what I tend to do, um, normally you can get these at a hardware store, paint filters in the, in the paint section. What I like to do is I'll, after each print, I'll take my resin and I'll pour it in one of these back into the bottle and it filters out any um, any residue or any chunks or anything like that that might be in your vat. Um, I also don't like to keep the resin in the vat if I'm not using it. So um, It's interesting that they're now providing you with these kinds of masks in comparison to the ones that were N95 with a port on the side. I only got two, 
So I will just use these because it's during a pandemic. So I probably will just use, I'll probably just use these um, when I'm going out in public. And of course, this is uh, the leveling paper. It's kind of thick, like hard stock. Um, previous printers, they've asked you to use A4 paper, which is standard printing paper. So I'm not quite sure why this is so thick, but the directions are printed right on it. So I'm pretty stoked about so, that. Now we're going to take the uh, actual printer out. The packaging is just, um, I don't know what to say. There's, uh, I've received items in the mail where things have not been packaged too well and they've either been severely damaged or played kickball with, one of the two. But this, they take their, their shipping seriously. They obviously don't want to deal with having to do it, ship it again or you just do it right the first time, and that's why I like Elugu. And then it's, this is wrapped separately. I remember uh, seeing a certain video by a certain individual who pulled this open and their bill plate fell out. <laughs> so I don't want that to happen. Um, so. And the build plate. So the build plate does come with a protective film on it. Uh, you'll want to take that off, obviously. Um, but it's just another prime example of how Iligu is takes extra precaution to make sure that their product is well taken care of, or their customers are taken care of. So the build plate does feel different in comparison to other build plates. If you are uh, a resin printer, if you have other resin printers, you'll notice it feels like it's been sanded with a fine grit paper. Um, and I think that's for adhesion. Um, and that, that works really well. Um, in comparison to the other, um, the Mars build plate, I've had to sandpaper it a little bit just to get it nice and level. Set that right there. And this is their signature. Covering with the bright red, or with the deep red, which I'm a huge fan of. Now what I do see is, a lot of people will put handles right here, so it's just easier to pick up. I am not afraid to use my hands. Um, I don't really want to drill into the plastic, um, but maybe some people will glue it on so they don't have to drill. Immediately when I look at this, I'm seeing the double rails. That's for extra stability. So that way when it's, when it's doing its thing, there's, no, there's less chance for any kind of error whatsoever. Um, this is the three and a half inch screen, uh, touch screen. And one of the things that I do like, and I'll show you in comparison in a moment, is that the USB is in the back, but, towards the, but on the side. It's on the side towards the back. So, you don't have any potential of nicking it, uh, bumping up against it, or, uh, or even um, spilling any resin on it. And we can't have any of that. Um, it's a beautiful machine. It, it's textured, it's, it's meant to perform, but look good as well. Um, 
So these are the screws to hold the vat, and it's unusual because you pull them all the way out um, rather than just loosen them. Um, there's two handles right here on the sides of the vat, and which makes it pretty easy. You've got your pour spout here. I usually like to put it on the top left because when I put the vat, when I pull the vat out and I want to pour it, I immediately it's in the front. So if you're left-handed or right-handed or I like having the pour spout here. And what's nice is four of these screws are protruding out of the plate. And there are four holes to ensure that you put the vat in the same place each time. There's a little bit of play, but I think if you just push forward or you just do it in the same way that each time, you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. Um, there's a max level, which is really nice. There's an indicator here because you can put too much resin in your vat. And if you end up doing that, it'll spill over. It could potentially get into uh, the printer and un under your LCD screen and cause further damage. And that's not something we want. Um, at all. Now on this, uh, when you're looking straight down on top of it, uh, step one it says please peel off this film before printing. Um, and then there's another sticker here that you don't want to remove the electrical tape. So the electrical tape basically keeps any light, any light from escaping out from while it's printing. Now in the back, this is where you have your on and off switch. Your two fans are on the top here and then uh, your plug is in the back. Now I haven't tested the, um, the LAN port in the back, <coughs> so I will have to get back to you on that after the unboxing portion of this video. Now this is step this is another step. Yep. So there is a, I'm echoing my voice here, there's another tab here and it'll ask you to pull this off. Now um, that is to, because this is a protective film on, on the vat, so pull that off. Um, so I'm not going to do it just yet because I'm not ready to. Um, so pull this off and then pull the tab off of the LCD screen. The easiest way to remember is that both of these tabs are in red. The one that's black, which is right on the LCD screen, that's the one you don't take off, and that's just the tape. That's pretty easy. And reassemble it. And you're all set. All right, so we had a side-by-side -side comparison with the, uh, with the Mars and the Saturn. I went ahead and I leveled the Saturn, uh, just followed the directions on the card. They're pretty straight and simple. Um, you just unscrew two bolts on the build plate, just like you would do on the Mars, and let it go down. You go to home and you tighten the screws after holding it down. Um, got to make sure that when you're when you're leveling it you got to push down on the plate not super hard but you want to make sure that when you're tightening the screws that you don't twist the plate because I notice that it will do that when you're trying to tighten these screws and you're holding it down and you're screwing it uh, the plate will want to spin so I wanted to leave these out to give you kind of a an idea of the difference in size there's one, two, and it's about two and a half times bigger than the standard Mars. Uh, and I'll have some specifics on, on the printer itself later in the video showing you um, what the build size is. I don't know it off the top of my head, but I should. Um, it's in my notes right there. Anyway, um, so as you can see, I had to, you can see that there's a little bit of paint taken off on this build plate for the Mars. 
It's not a Mars Pro. Uh, this is just a standard Mars. But I wanted to make sure that it was flat because I was having some issues with uh, print sticking. Um, but this one here, it totally feels completely different. Um, and I try not to touch the bottom of it to avoid any oil touching it. And this big knob works pretty good. Um, now this, um, not sure where I got this, but I'm gonna make another one, I'll probably design one. Uh, but what's cool about this is that you can set it like this and then the, the point hangs over the vat so that way the access resin just drips back into the vat after you're done with your print. And of course, uh, the other difference is you've got the USB port here on the side, whereas on the Mars, it's in the back and I had to buy this extra cord and, you know, so I can bring it out in the front and I don't have to worry about any of that. Um, also with the Mars, at least with mine, you have to slide it out. You leave potential uh, for scratching. Um, that's if you're not careful. Um, but I also had to put some, I, you know, put some tape on here so that way it serves the same purpose as the one that it comes with already. Um, but it's nice that the difference also, another difference is when you set this down, I mean, you would never set it down flat on the table, uh, but whatever it is that you're setting it on, or it's a micro, uh, microfiber uh, cloth uh, towel or even a paper towel, um, you're setting it, the vat directly on, on, on it. With the vat on the Saturn, you don't have to worry about that because this has those four protruding screws that I mentioned, um, and it sets down um, on the flat surface, but the vat is not touching the table. If there's, I haven't tested it yet, but if there's fluid in it, I don't know how much that'll weigh it down. That's one thing I haven't uh, seen. Um, but that's pretty much it as far as the comparisons go. Um, next is going to be some serious printing, and I'm going to do that pretty quick here. So I appreciate your patience during this unboxing of the printer. I'm really looking forward to getting started on it. I noticed that the printer, when I had it on, it wasn't super loud. Um, it was no louder than the Mars, really, um, even though it's got two fans. Uh, one other thing I want to stress, make sure that you use adequate protection when working with resins or IPA or any other uh, chemicals. Um, there's some videos out there for ventilation to make sure you vent ventilate the room in which you have your printers in. Um, so make sure you take care of that because um, we want you printing for a long time. Anyway, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get going and get this set up. And the next video, I'll be showing uh, where I keep my, my printers and um, showing off some of the prints. Hey, and welcome back. Um, wow, what a week it's been. Um, I've been printing like a madman. Uh, first, I wanted to tell you that I got a chance to try out the uh, 1.7 version of Chiru Box, and I have to say, this is a version that I would actually pay for. Uh, the, there was no instances of crashing. There were a lot of features that I took advantage of, um, especially when it comes to adding one support and then branching off the other ones so that you only have one going to the build plate, uh, which worked out to be pretty cool. Uh, there were some other um, features that I could get into and spend more detail in on another video, uh, but right for right now I'm just going to say that I had an awesome time printing these uh, with that um, new update. I've looked into um, lychee also, um, but again that's going to be on another video where I'm going to either compare the two or just you know kind of give you a heads up or my opinion on both of them. 
When it comes to this Saturn, um, the only issue that I had was towards the last couple of parts that I was printing. Um, I was noticing that, for example, on, a, on this base right here, this part wasn't staying on the plate uh, as far as supports go. So what I think what happened was when you're removing your prints from the build plate, what you will have a tendency to do if you're not careful is when you're holding on to it and you're sc scraping the scraping the uh, parts off of the plate off the plate, you could easily contort or uh, you know knock it out of uh, alignment or uh, I should say leveling. So all I did was I re-leveled and that solved the problem right away. So just keep that in mind uh, when you're um, when you're removing the parts from the plate. Um, as you can see, uh, this is the um, the Orc Executioner from World of Warcraft. This came out just amazing. The details in this thing, uh, I I just I I can't even I can't even. Um, I'm short for words for it, obviously, here, but uh, this here I, I purchased off of uh, uh, from GameBody. Uh, GameBody has a collection, a mass selection of busts and all kinds of things that you could download. Um, GameBody, um, everybody wins because funds, support go to the modelers as well as the site. And then you get the files, you get to print them, and you have this like amazing piece of work that you've printed. So I like supporting companies that support the modelers, um, and GameBody does that. Um, another one that I had um, on hand was uh, the Thanos uh, from Infinity War. It's just a bust. I'm not sure where I got it offhand, but. If you look at this close to this one here uh, that I printed uh, with my CR10 uh, FDM printer, it comes out pretty good, but there are some details that you simply just cannot see, um, even from a finely tuned uh, FDM printer. And I consider mine to be pretty well tuned. I took a lot of time getting it to print stuff like to look like that. Um, but I wanted to do a comparison since I already had one printed. And I'm extremely happy. I hollowed out everything to uh, a two millimeter wall thickness, which worked out really well. Saves on resin um, and it makes it pretty light. Um, I do currently, I do my, my hollowing uh, using the Prusa slicer because it makes the inside of the model less pixelated um, or make it look like it's a, a crystal cave or something. Everything is nice and smooth. And I think that's the only other thing that uh, Cheetobox uh, could work on uh, amongst uh, just a couple of minor issues. But again, this printer, um, I had a blast with it and I can't wait to print some bigger stuff. I mean, this guy right here, uh, he's pretty big, but I'm seeing people print stuff. Uh, there's a guy on the Saturn Facebook group who's printing a full-size Iron Man suit because with this monochrome screen, a 4K monochrome screen, you have thousands of hours in comparison to a 2K uh, non-LCD screen. Uh, my Phenom uh, is only good for about 400 plus hours and I just had to purchase a couple of LCD screens um, because even though it's a full-size printer, I have to make sure that I'm very selective on what I print. But with this guy, uh, this opens the doors so that way I can print less on the, on the Phenom and then I can print more on this guy if I can, if I can muster it, you know, if, it's, if I can fit it on the build plate or even cut it uh, just in half or something like that. Um, I went ahead and I printed the, my first print was the Rooks. The Rooks came out pretty awesome. The detail is 
all, all there. I can't complain at all. Um, all of this is printed using the um, Soraya Tech Fast Gray Resin. Um, this is my go-to uh, resin of choice. Um, I've used the ABS, the Elagoos, uh resin, and then I've used this one, and I'm just really happy with this. I will post my settings uh, for the Saturn using the Soraya Tech. Um, you pretty much are good with the 1.7. If you add the Saturn in the 1.7 uh, Chidu box, uh, the exposure time is the biggest one. You can bounce around. I stick with the 2.5. I went ahead and tried the up, up it to 3.0, and I noticed that it made my parts a little too brittle on the brittle side. Uh, so I stuck with um, the 2.5 and just straight Soraya Tech Gray. One of the things that I do like to do on uh, larger prints or prints with such great detail is I like to mix Tenacious, which is by Soraya Tech, 20% uh, and then 80% of the Fast. And what that does is it makes it less brittle. And if you drop it, it's not going to shatter into a million pieces. So um, anyway, that's pretty much what I have here for you. Um, one of the other things I want to close up with is I recently purchased the Elugu wash station. Um, that saves so much time. I had a 22 liter um, ultrasonic uh, cleaner filled with mean green. And that helped too. And then I had other um, containers with uh, IPA, isopropyl alcohol, and it just added too many steps. And all I did was just, I have this small clean station and it does everything for me. And I was able to do all of these parts. I still have another um, option to do it, but this just, you know, it makes your assembly just go that much quicker. Um, your rhythm is, is right on point. Anyway, uh, so that's it. Um, I'm kind of getting the hang of these videos. Uh, I can't wait to post more. I want to uh, thank, um, I'm going to give a shout out to Uncle Jesse. Uh, he's been very um, helpful uh, with some of the uh, tips and tricks that he's given me over the past year. It is his fault for getting me started into all of this. It, just about anything that I have in my printing room is because of him. So uh, watch out for that. It, your wallet will be uh, a little bit less heavy uh, if you watch a lot of his videos, but they're very helpful. Um, also 3D Printing Pro. Um, I went to his, what, his videos and looked at his uh, printing settings and that helped me a little bit as well. Um, if you have any other comments or suggestions, please feel free uh, to drop me a line. Uh, subscribe because I think I'm going to be doing a little bit more of these. Winter is upon us and uh, I do want to wish everybody to be safe. Uh, don't forget to vote. It's not quite uh, voting time yet. And um, thank you again for watching. Subscribe and I guess you got to click that little bell uh, and every time I come out with a video uh, you'll get notified. Thanks again. Have a great one.